In the opening scene, we see Spain descending into chaos as a severe crisis grips Europe, leading to shortages of basic necessities. As a result of a tyrannical government, the regime called Not Enough for All takes place. In order to cope with this crisis, the government initiates a deadly measure, extermination of the elderly at first, and eventually pregnant women and children. Some nations, such as Ireland, Iceland, and Norway, stand against this brutality, so many people are trying to escape to those lands. However, doing this legally is almost impossible, prompting people to resort to illegal means. Among many people, we are introduced to a married couple, Nico and Mia, who are trying to leave Spain via illegal means. They bribe a human trafficker to smuggle them to a local harbor for escape. The couple then makes their way through shipping containers, hiding from the authorities and their monitoring helicopters. Along the way, they come across another smuggler who demands more money. The couple is already offered all of their money, so they are forced to sacrifice their wedding rings. Following this, they are allowed to board a truck's container that will transport them to the port. Nico's plan is to escape to Ireland by being transported on a cargo ship. Once inside the truck, they find themselves among other desperate people, including pregnant women like Mia and other families with children. However, no one talks to one another as they are consumed by their own concerns. During this, Nico presents Mia with a chocolate, urging her to save it for later to celebrate their rescue. It'll melt, you dumbass, says Mia. Through their conversation, we learn that the couple had tragically lost their firstborn daughter as she was shot by the military. In the morning, the truck abruptly stops and a crowd of people forcibly enter. As the truck gets overloaded, the smugglers order the people split in half and get on another truck. When the people resist, they threaten them with guns and force them out. Sadly, Nico and Mia get separated in this process as he is loaded onto another truck container. Scared, Mia immediately contacts her husband via phone and Nico tells her not to worry. He assures her that they'll reunite later because the trucks are going towards the same destination. The truck then drives through the streets where people are protesting protesting against the violence. Mia peeps through a hole in the container and witnesses the authorities, mercilessly killing the rioters and taking the women and children away. After some time, the truck stops at a military checkpoint and the officers instruct the driver to open the container. The driver nervously complies, allowing the officers to investigate. At first, they only find some boxes inside the container as the escapees are all hiding behind a false wall. However, the leader notices that the container appears larger from outside and concludes that there's a secret compartment, believing that the fugitives are hiding inside. He instructs them to come out or face dire consequences. Fearing imminent danger, Mia hastily climbs up to a tall wooden crate and hides herself, while other women reluctantly open the door. Moments later, the officers open fire, killing the entire group. Mia clenches her mouth, trying hard not to make any sound. After this, the soldiers clean up the container and release the truck. Mia then instantly sends a voice message to Nico, warning him that his truck is going to be checked next. A while later, Mia's container is loaded onto a ship. Upon learning that she's arrived at the port, she tries to contact her husband but fails to reach him. Hence, she decides to take some rest and eventually falls asleep. Hours later, Mia is awakened by sudden jolts. Peering through a hole, she sees the sailors in a state of chaos as the ship goes through a huge sea storm. Mia cries out for help, begging to be released, but no one can hear her. The container continues to shake causing her to fall numerous times. At one point, a strong jolt causes her to hit her head, rendering her unconscious. Sometime later, Mia wakes up, only to discover water seeping into the container through holes. In a perplexed state, she looks through a hole and witnesses the other containers slowly sinking into the water. Panicked, she desperately attempts to call Nico, but her phone is now damaged. Just then, she finds a bag left behind by a fellow traveler, which contains a working phone. However, she doesn't know the passcode to make a call. Seeing the water flowing inside through the holes, she searches through the crates in hopes of finding a solution. The crates hold various items such as plastic boxes, earphones, flat screen TVs, vodka, and more. She also finds hoodies and puts one on. Upon further inspection, she comes across some yellow tape, which she uses to seal the holes. Shortly after, Mia is going through her photo diary when she hears screaming voices from outside. Looking through the hole, she witnesses Nico container sinking. This deeply frightens her, and she screams her husband's name repeatedly. She also inserts her SIM card into the working phone, but the call doesn't go through. Overcome with grief, Mia breaks down in tears as she watches the container sink. While she's 
mourning her husband's death, Mia stumbles upon a penknife and contemplates doing the unthinkable. But right then, she feels a kick from her unborn child, which prompts her to reconsider her decision. She then intends to live for her baby and lays down with tears in her eyes. The next morning, Mia wakes up to find the tape sealing the holes has come off and water is again flowing inside. Following this, she pushes a crate beneath another hanging one and uses her knife to release it. She opens it, only to discover more plastic boxes. This initially infuriates her, but she soon realizes that the rubber of those plastic containers can be used to cover the holes. After doing so, Mia uses a pipe to throw away the water from inside. She then checks her supplies and plans to use them in an optimum way. After two days, Mia receives a call from an unknown number, and much to her relief, it's from Nico. He informs her that the driver has abandoned them outside the city and that it'll take some time for him to catch up with her. Mia then confides that she's stuck in the middle of the ocean, which worries him, obviously. Nevertheless, he promises that he'll come up with a plan. I mean, it sounds like you're probably fucked, honey, but I'm gonna do what I- I'm gonna- We'll see. That night, the container goes through another storm, making it difficult for Mia to maintain her balance. To worsen the situation, she begins to experience labor pains. As the water shakes the container, Mia's pain continues to rise. She tries to call her husband, but the phone slips from her hand. With no other choice, she takes off her clothes, holds onto the container ropes, and eventually gives birth to a baby girl. Following this, Mia carries her baby and gets in a crate, waiting for the storm to pass. If that baby survives, it'll grow up to become Thor. The following morning, Mia cleans up the space and uses the hoodies as diapers for her baby. She tries to care for her child as best she can, but the infant refuses to eat and continues to cry. In the midst of this, Mia hears a squeaking sound and has an idea. She uses a drilling machine to create holes in the ceiling, hoping to make an opening. However, the noise only makes the baby cry, prompting her to stop. That evening, her breasts finally begin to locate. What? And she feels her child before putting her to sleep. At night, she gets overwhelmed by hunger, and as a result, she ends up finishing all the food she has. In the morning, she continues drilling the ceiling. Mia is about to finish when, unfortunately, the machine's battery dies. She then proceeds to cut it using the pen knife. However, she can't carry on for much longer, as the exhaustion overcomes her. Inside the container, it's very hot, and there's limited air to breathe. Due to this, she wets the cloth with the seawater and helps her child with heat. As the time passes, the situation only worsens because Mia now has nothing to eat. When hunger becomes unbearable, she decides to eat her own placenta. Oh my god. Oh, which she had pres- uh, Okay, as night descends, Mia hears the haunting calls of whales. <coughs> She tries to remain silent, but when a whale collides with the container, she tumbles, frightening the baby and causing her to cry. In an effort to ward off the whale, Mia strikes the container wall with a wooden panel, making loud noises. It's her sixth day in the container, and Mia again continues to work on creating an opening in the ceiling. Unfortunately, her only tool, the penknife, also breaks. Furthermore, her phone is still not working, and the clean drinking water also runs out. To quench her thirst, she begins licking water drops from the ceiling, but it's clearly not enough. Later, Mia begins to experience hallucinations. Too bad she didn't know that placenta is all the rage with hippie teens these days. She sees her elder daughter accusing her for abandoning her, but Nico also appears and assures Mia that it's not her fault. A short while later, Mia snaps out from her semi-conscious state and notices that it's raining. She quickly arranges some plastic boxes to collect the water and also sips some to quench her thirst. After this, Mia uses the crate ropes to pull away a piece of the container's metal, finally revealing the sky above. She then makes her way out of the container and breathes in the fresh air. She also brings her daughter outside, allowing the baby to enjoy some freshness as well. However, the troubling thing is that there is an endless sea on all sides, with no land in sight. Shortly after, Mia changes her baby's diaper and throws the dirty one in the water. Littering, come on. This attracts some fish, which gives her hopes of obtaining food. Mia then constructs a makeshift tool and tries to catch the fish, but sadly, her efforts are in vain as she's unable to hit any of them. After multiple attempts, she finally gives up. At that moment, she spots an airplane
airplane passing overhead. Reacting swiftly, she hurries down the container and grasps a piece of a TV screen to reflect the sunlight. But being in a hurry, she ends up injuring her leg on the sharp edge of the hatch. To make matters worse, the airplane also leaves without noticing her. In the next scene, Mia gets down on the container and uses TV wires and metal pieces to stitch up her wound. The process is so painful that she falls unconscious at times, but she somehow manages to complete it. During the nighttime, she begins weaving together the earphone wires. By morning, she successfully makes a fishing net, which she then uses to catch fish. After a long time of hunger, Mia finally enjoys the raw fish. From that day onward, she catches fish and stores them in plastic boxes for her timely meals. Apart from all this, she also writes SOS notes, keeps them in plastic boxes, and releases them into the sea, hoping that someone will see them. One night, Mia shows some family pictures to her daughter and names her Noah. After talking to the baby for a while, both of them fall asleep. At midnight, Mia awakens to the sound of something that's hitting the container. She carries the baby and slowly climbs up, only to discover that it's a plastic box. It's always a plastic box in this movie. At the same time, she receives a call from Nico, and she's delighted to hear his voice. But unfortunately, he has bad news. He says that he tried to steal a boat to escape, but he was spotted by the soldiers and got shot. He is currently hiding in a container and losing a lot of blood. Nico apologizes to Mia, saying that he won't be able to make it, and that she has to fight for herself and their baby. Mia is devastated but shares the news of their daughter's birth. In response, Nico bids a final goodbye to Mia and Noah before passing away. Once more, Mia's hope shatters, and she breaks down in tears. She then spends the rest of the night gazing at the sky. The scene fast forwards then to day 26, and the container is half submerged in water. Mia is at the top of the container with her baby. She is constructing a makeshift raft, using materials from the container. During this, she notices a seagull, which gives her hope of rescue. As the night falls, Mia gets her raft ready and puts her baby in it. Suddenly, she hears a sound within the container and learns that it'll sink soon. As a result, she dives down to retrieve her belongings. She notices that the chocolate given to her by her husband is floating in the corner. She then swims toward it, but unfortunately, her leg gets tangled in some ropes. The container starts sinking as Mia struggles to free herself, but at the last moment, she manages to cut the rope and swims up. As Mia resurfaces, she panics when she doesn't see her baby. Just then, a whale passes by and expels some water on the baby, prompting her to cry. That's one way to find a baby. Mia hears the crying voice and swims towards Noah. The next morning, Mia, who is completely exhausted, throws the fish she had captured, hoping to attract some birds. In this weakened state, she talks to Noah, claiming that she did everything she could. At the same time, a fishing boat is casting nets in the area. A fisherman and his family notice is a seagull surrounding something. The family sails closer, only to discover the raft with the child. They quickly pull the raft up, and right then, notice a rope attached to it. They pull on it until Mia's body comes out. The rescue group then brings her aboard the boat and immediately begins performing CPR. Initially, Mia doesn't react, but the continuous chest compressions bring her back to life. Upon regaining consciousness, her first concern is for her baby, whom the fisherman's wife gently hands to her. It takes some time for Mia to realize that she's safe, and she tears well up as she sees that they're approaching the shores of Ireland. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.